Good. Um, so we're going to be, uh, those, those are actually, it's not a presentation, it's more like a few things that we may want to base our discussion on. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about open access and negative results and presenting those negative results. So we've been talking about communication, but we need to know uh, the concept of open access. Uh, who can access that uh, research? Who can, how can we communicate what we've done as openly as possible so that anybody can benefit from it? And um, as you may be aware, or you may not be aware that it's been quite a long time uh, since we were supposed to make pretty much everything we do open access, uh, but we don't. At least I don't, uh, and I don't know if you do, but uh, I think we we are, um, there's a mandate for most of our funders to do what we do in an open access fashion, but it's not always possible and it's not always easy to do this. So what do we mean by open access? There are a few routes to achieve this. Uh, so I'm going to mostly talk about papers. Now, there are many other things in open science, not just open access, but I'm going to discuss this. So there are, there are a few routes that you may use. And um, so you decide, can you see my pointer? Okay, so you decide where to publish. You can check the, if that particular journal is available in an open access uh, option. So you can check the Romeo. And then you can go straight to an open access journal pay, which is the main thing, we pay for this. Quite likely, I mean, it's, there are not many that are free, and then it's immediately open. That's fantastic. The other option that is there is to go to a standard journal and then go through a green open access route, which is, you can do two things. One is to search for a repository, which means that you can make a, a copy so you can archive it and then you can offer it, but it's not always possible. So you can archive it and that depends on the publisher policy. And that varies a lot between one journal and another. And sometimes it's hidden somewhere in their website, somewhere where you cannot find it. So it's not easy, but it's possible to, to make your, your research open access and then after a while, you can put it in your website or you can put the preprint. There are many different options that you have. And if not, another thing that you can do is to uh, pay again, which again involves payment and money and make it uh, uh, available immediately. So that is what you may do. Uh, so I'm going to first, so I'm going to show you because you've been, uh, I'm, I'm not going to just show you what what we what we think. I'm going to show you what you've been telling us that you think about this subject. Sorry, I have somehow I've managed to put all your faces in the middle of my screen. <laughs> I don't know what I clicked on. Anyway, well, I I know what it is be, be, be below you. So uh, just just uh, I'm going to show you the results of what you uh, filled in. But I'm also going to say that this is not the first time we've run this survey. Actually, the same survey that you've just filled in on your, uh, on your uh, impressions on open access and, and negative results is something that we did uh, a couple of years ago. And so we have, I'm going to be showing you your results on the context of what other people already told us. So a couple of years ago, we sent this to the whole uh, or whole action and we asked them to distribute it. And it was, um, it, it was around a bit under 100 people that replied. So right now we had uh, 25, which is uh, fewer. And actually they're not exactly the same, uh, the same people. Uh, as you can see right now, obviously in this training school, we have many more younger uh, participants uh, in their early sta earlier stages of their career. So this may influence, influence the results that we're getting. And uh, also, because you are uh, in the majority a bit younger, not always decide where to publish. So there may be your supervisor telling us, telling you that you should try for this or that journal. 
Sometimes it's just because they've been doing that for longer and they have many more journals in their mind than you do. Uh, but other times it may be because they do want to publish here or there. So it may not be exactly the same. So what, when you choose a journal, what do you look for? And actually you see on the top is what our response uh, last uh, a couple of years ago and the lower in the lower side of the slide it will be your responses so for most of us is impact factor which is not surprising really uh, because it's something that we are quite used to to use to assess how interesting a journal is or how impactful it is but actually i want to just point out one little thing that what is the impact factor of a journal actually the impact factor is a, is a metric that is calculated by, by Clarivate. And it's supposed to give you an average number of citations in the last couple of years in any given journal. So the idea would be that it's a, if it's a paper that is cited a lot, then it's supposed to be a good paper. But actually it's an average between you know, all the publications of that particular journal. So uh, it's, it's, it's quite easy to, to play with it. And also one thing that is very important is that there is a company actually who gives those impact factors to journals. So it's actually, uh, they, they work on benefit. So um, it's not, it, it's quite interesting to see that we as researchers have decided to give the, the power on who decides what's important and what's not important to a company and then pay for it, just a thought. So on open access, uh, most of you have already uh, published in open access, although the percentage is a bit lower. So I guess you've probably published less as well, uh, but it, I, I was quite surprised to see that open access had gone down from our previous survey, but I would, obviously the numbers are not that high. So. Why? Why did you choose to go for learn open access? So actually, this is something that has changed a little since the last time we did run this survey. Because before it was just that, because it happened, my the, the journal I had was open access. And now it's more, I wanted it to be open access. So I think there is a slight trend to try to make it more accessible. Uh, and then what are your main reasons not to publish in open access? And this is almost a copycat. It's too expensive. So I think in general, what we all complain about is that we need to pay for this and that it ends up being a bit too expensive for our budgets. So the other question was, if you had ever published a paper in an institutional repository or and it could be your own web or your institution or ResearchGate, LinkedIn. And it's similar, although um, the, I think the interesting thing, it varies, is that what um, that, that I was a bit, uh, it's just, it's the no. Uh, the no has actually increased a bit in, the, in our current survey. So there seems to be fewer people uh, uh, uploading their papers to repositories, which is a bit a concern, I think, because actually this is something that you can do rather easily. And I'm going to give you an example. This is a paper uh, that we published a few years back. And it's a paper that I tend to show at meetings because I like the fact that many of the authors of these papers are uh, many different stakeholders from different things. So it's a paper that we wrote on the uh, we wrote on the on the difficulties of developing a, a, an oligonucleotide for a rare disease. It could be something for pretty much any orphan drug. And there are patients there, there are researchers, there are clinicians, regulators, and from many different countries. And we published that in Lancet Neurology, and we were extremely happy with it. Uh, but actually, it's not open access, which we only realized when it was published. Uh, which was quite annoying because obviously we wanted this to be accessible to pretty much any other patient community or anyone who was going through the same route as us. So what we did at the point was to make our own copy of it. So this is what I did. I made 
a copy. This is basically our own paper. We call it, we wrote it as a preprint copy. It says, it's pretty much need to read what it says in the web page from the journal and see what you're allowed to do. So they ask you to mention which is the right place to link the paper, you, you said so. And then you, you make your own copy. I also made it in green hues, so it looked a bit more like Lancet Neurology. Uh, and then we uploaded it. Uh, we have it in our website, so it's here. So I have it in my personal website, and we also put it in ResearchGate. And actually in ResearchGate, it's been read a lot. Uh, and uh, it was read so much, and it got so much media attention that even Lancet Neurology came to say, hey, this is one of the ones that we have been, you know, more uh, happier with because there's been quite a lot of buzz. And that was despite the fact that we had, in a way, gone over the system to publish our own version of the copy and make it freely available to everyone. So this is something that you should consider because it's not as complicated. And you can put it either ResearchGate it's also another company, so it's probably maybe not the best example, but there are places at your university where you can do something similar. So what about negative results or the new hypothesis? This negative has some negative connotations. So uh, if you see this paper, this is a paper studying quite a lot of uh, results in research in general, and it found out something quite interesting that in the previous years, uh, the studies where the initial hypothesis was verified. So we do an experiment to test an hypothesis and then we see if it's right or wrong. This is science. And actually the, the positive results had increased by 22%. And actually the papers claiming to have produced positive results rate to 85% of everything that was published that has no resemblance to science itself. We do the experiments not to get good results. We make experiments to get answers and answers could be positive or negative. So actually what we are publishing is not a reflection of what we are seeing. And that is a problem, that is a concern. So I'm again, going back to what you told us about your impressions of negative results. And actually most of us before and after think that finding a different result is not negative. Although there are some that think that maybe and some that yes, but the majority thinks that it's not a bad thing to find something that doesn't, that is not the same as what was seen before. Uh, and then, but the thing is most of us have not published negative for, you know, not or not so good results. Also, have, but it's true that also we probably haven't tried to publish those results. Uh, and it's not that we don't want to, because nobody here said, no, I don't want to publish my negative results. And people would probably want to do it. But uh, even though we think they are worth sharing with the scientific community, you can see here there's a resounding yes in, the, in your answers about sharing your results, we still don't do it. And what are the reasons for that? Well, the reasons is that, I don't know, does it need to be groundbreaking? Well, in fact, what we tend to think and what we see, we see in the previous, in the previous survey, there were lots of many other reasons, but in general, we all talk about being it too time consuming and not being worth it of our time and our effort. Uh, but I think that our main problem is what we still haven't discussed. I don't know if you know the, the, the concept of the elephant in the room, which is quite common in English. And it's this huge thing that is in the middle, but we are ignoring. And it's probably the way we are being assessed. Uh, this, this publish or Paris and the way that we are evaluated when we need to present your data. We, we need to show good results and we need to publish a lot and we need impact factor for us to be uh, to continue in our careers. And actually, uh, there are some things that are being done. So if you search for Dora, not this one, uh, you, you may find that actually there are some 
a guidelines uh, for the declaration of research assessment of San Francisco is already almost 10 years old and recognize the needs to improve the ways in which researchers are evaluated. And actually, you may be quite surprised and see that perhaps your institution, your university, your funding is coming from someone who has signed for this, but then they do the other way around. They, they said, yes, we need to do this, but then they don't. So probably we need to push for this actually to be implemented. And up, after DORA, we also have the Leiden Manifesto, which is also a set of rules to try to uh, make assessment of science uh, fairer. So those are the things that we probably should strive to, to do, but we don't yet. So those are just some of the things that I wanted to discuss with you. Uh, and I'm going to let uh, Michaela continue. Uh, so then perhaps we can discuss some of those details later on. Thank you, Virginia. I'll share my screen quickly. And uh, I put on the presentation. So talking about uh, nice t-shirts. Uh, Sergio had one nice t-shirt the other day and I thought I would uh, also show a nice t-shirt here. So this says, uh, if at first you don't succeed, try two more times so that your failure is statistically significant and uh, you know uh, this is a bit uh, the idea uh, about uh, uh, trying to um, you know publish negative results so they have to you know be published we have to share um, I wouldn't call them failures so I would go, uh, call them uh, you know successes in showing that something does not work uh, and this has to be also of a quality so that it's uh, really like that. Uh, and this is, I think, one of the, of the problems of uh, uh, sharing ne negative results. And I'll tell you why I think it's a problem. And um, I'm sorry, I had to put this picture here. Uh, Virginia is not pleased by the fact that I'm showing her, but I think um, it was really, uh, this is a picture from the uh, beginning of this cost action. Uh, and uh, um, and I think this is uh, also when uh, the whole thing about publishing negative results uh, has been starting uh, in our cost action. So um, uh, I think the the action uh, uh, as a network uh, uh, is uh, uh, very important, uh, both because we meet each other, but also because we share ideas and concepts and during this time you know, it was Bilbao the center of the universe as you know uh, and start date February 25th uh, 2019 so more than two years ago uh, and uh, and this was the audience there and I'm sure you will uh, recognize Virginia but also many of the people uh, uh, around today so um, here is myself it's uh, I, I hear some noise. Yeah, I think uh, so. Sorry, but there is something that uh, is not clear, and then there is a sound. Uh, I like the background. I I don't know that uh, there is some problem with the technical. Uh... Can you hear me now? And do, does it does it? Yes, no, sound no, fine. I think yeah. So, uh, so I was saying this is the audience uh, of that first uh, meeting of the cost action and Mimike is here, Marisol is here, uh, I think Aurelie is here, uh, Juzi, so lots of people, uh, Liliana, lots of people you know. And in this uh, audience at a certain point, uh, I think it was uh, Annemieke that said, uh, well, we could try to publish negative results on uh, uh, nucleic acid therapeutics, why don't we have a special issue? And so uh, more than two years after this special issue is now becoming reality, it's going to be uh, published uh, next month. Uh, and uh, it's a whole issue on uh, turning net negative results into a positive development. 
Um, I've been following it, following it uh, as a guest uh, uh, co-editor together with uh, Walter Eilers, who is uh, um, now at Sutura Therapeutics. And he has also made this nice cover um, trying to put you know, the two concepts here. So it's negative results, but as uh, Virginia was saying, uh, uh, in fact, we are turning them into positive developments. And um, uh, I think uh, when trying to do this uh, um, operation, like uh, editorial operation, um, one has to keep uh, some, uh, something in mind. So uh, for example, you know, this was a kind of an experiment. Let's see what uh, happens if we say that we are you know, uh, allowing uh, publishing uh, negative results as uh, complete papers. Uh, how many people will, uh, will send us papers and how many of those papers will make it through and, and be actually published. And so we got nine papers and six of them have been accepted. So there was some filter, uh, not anything has <laughs> been uh, published. Uh, and we had uh, one paper which had the four rounds of, uh, of revisions. Um, and these are, are the papers. So there are some original uh, papers uh, on uh, nucleic acid therapeutics. And then there is uh, um, uh, an editorial, uh, which is, uh, oh, sorry, there is an editorial by me and Bouters, but what I wanted to mean is uh, there is a brief com communication, uh, which is uh, what uh, Virginia was describing, uh, uh, the result of the survey and, and some thinking about uh, um, publishing uh, negative results. So um, I think uh, um, uh, this uh, work we have done in the past uh, two years or so uh, with the uh, nucleic acid therapeutics uh, has been uh, uh, also interesting to me. So uh, we were wondering, you know, why do we have uh, to publish negative results? And uh, I really believe that one of the reasons is to add knowledge as such. So. Uh, uh, science is mainly, uh, you know, a journey through knowledge and uh, you are adding your little grain uh, in the big, uh, 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 let's say, mountain of, uh, of knowledge. And so, you know, this grain can be also about something that does not work. It's still uh, knowledge and maybe someone will make out uh, uh, later why that thing uh, has not worked. Um, and also, very importantly, we uh, make, uh, um, we, we allow others not to make the same mistakes. So uh, this has a, an importance uh, uh, because uh, uh, you, you spare money in general, so money from society. Other people will not try to do the same experiments if they didn't work. Uh, and also, of course, uh, you uh, help others uh, to uh, not waste their time. Um, but, uh, um, and if you publish that, you have been spending like two years on something that did not get uh, to, you know, uh, a big uh, discovery, but still you have been spending your time. Uh, so in my, you might also see it as a way to show the funders uh, what you have been doing with their money. Uh, there is a, a caveat, something that we really have to think about, and this is that um, if you publish as a negative result something that uh, uh, you didn't really try to accomplish, so if the, the, the quality of what you're reporting is poor, um, uh, or uh, uh, you have poor proofs of what you are showing, then you might uh, prevent others from trying uh, and, and actually succeeding on the same path. Uh, so one has to put a lot of uh, effort in the way um, re reviewing these uh, uh, drafts and uh, making them go through the publication is being done. And this, uh, I remember very well, now Aurelie has left, but uh, she was the one asking uh, the question. So how uh, are we going to uh, review these uh, papers? Because the standards cannot be exactly the same, meaning that uh, nobody puts uh, money uh, to statistically confirm that something does not work. So how many times do you have to fail in order to be sure that that's really a negative result? Uh, but on the other hand, uh, you need to have uh, reviewers being strict because uh, if you let a paper being published, uh, uh, then it becomes a published paper. So it becomes 
kind of uh, the, the truth. And that's where I, I stop uh, sharing because, um, uh, you know, in the last uh, 10, 15 minutes of this uh, uh, session, we can discuss a bit about uh, that, uh, that things. So the, 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 the issue is going to be uh, out soon. I think there has been, uh, uh, in parallel, uh, another uh, attempt. Yes, uh, actually, uh, in the last few months, we've also had a call specific for negative results on the field of neuromuscular disorders. It's not in the same field as we all are uh, in the action, but quite a few people in the action are also uh, working in, the, in these diseases. Um, in this case, I was co-editing with Anamike in the Journal of Neuro, uh, Neuromuscular Disorders. Um, and I have to say, um, I don't have the numbers of how many were uh, rejected because what we, what they did, the editors, uh, I think only around three or four uh, um, submitted their papers with a specific issue in mind. They said, okay, I am submitting because I know there is a special call for negative results, but others were picked up from usual submissions. They said, okay, you, so this tells tell us that there are already uh, people submitting what we may consider not positive result, not positive or not uh, great results. Probably that's also why they were sent to Journal of Neuromuscular Disorders and not to cell and or, or, or nature. But there are actually people publishing those things. Uh, so right now, I think there are seven that have already been accepted. Uh, there will also be an editorial and there is quite a wide range of results. Uh, and actually there is even a clinical trial, which is something that we're quite pleased with that we will be man will, will be publishing a clinical trial with not so good results, but actually they have tons of data. And it's a pity and it's something that in, in general we tend to complain about is that sometimes clinical trials that don't work too well, they get completely forgotten and no one is like, what happened with, I don't know. Uh, what was that? I don't know. So I think this is something that probably, some probably also perhaps because they are made to publish them, which is good. We'll probably see more of those uh, in the near future, but I think it's, it's quite a good thing. Another thing that I wanted to mention apart from the from this particular issue is that it also has to do with the value we give to real journals, as they said, because we are still depend on impact factors, uh, peer review, etc. We we probably give tons of value for something to be published in a real journal. So I think probably we could have a two tier message. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud, but I think for things that we did properly with all the controls, with all the proper experiments, we can pro you, we, pro we probably should aim to publish them in a standard journal. But I think perhaps if we have some early results on something that we're not going to pursue any further, that is well done. And I'm not going to say that we publish just anything, but perhaps that we don't we don't repeat that many times that is only indicative or is of a result or it suggests perhaps we can use the the tools that now we have like the the uh, bio archive for example the good thing about those resources is that they give you a doi so it's identifiable you can find it you can search for it and you can cite it so if you had, for example, a small project with a master's student that didn't work as well, but it was properly done, perhaps you can show that this work was actually done, that that, that student will have something to show. You would have the funders with, you know, a, a piece of paper, a published thing, and it's not reviewed. It may be in the future, but it would also be findable, so something that someone else could find and say, actually, I'm doing this similar experiment and perhaps may end up being part of someone else's work. Yeah. Someone who has the resources to do it. 
you were talking about uh, um, the let's say uh, op the um, European Union pushing a lot to open access and open science and so on. Yes. And I think they now created a repository for uh, publishing, which I don't know how it works. It's a tono, uh, I think. I, I'm still trying to find out how it works, but actually recently we've been, uh, I mean, we've only done it once for the time being uh, to publish in the bio archive and our feelings are a bit mixed. Uh, but I think it could be a good alternative because it's obviously not peer review and it's but it's written in there but you have a way to find it and i think that's the main thing that we should care about when we are sharing our results is that someone else could find it and they could read it and they could benefit from it so perhaps if you had made some early experiments in which you treated some mice with something and they all died you can make a very small you know detailed account of what you did this is this is how we did it those are the mice this is how they all died i don't know what happened and i think that should be enough to put in a place where it can be found obviously it won't give you any points in any academic evaluation or anything like that but it will be something that someone can find and it may be enough for someone else to say Actually, I also had the same kind of mice that died when I used this and this and that. And perhaps later on, six or seven of those papers could become a paper because someone In fact, uh, what we, that. I'm just trying to. Yeah, what Virginia, Virginia yeah. is giving us an example. It's a real example of uh, these uh, vivo morpholinos, which uh, you know everybody thought that they were really useful, and then. Uh, they were all trying and uh, all the animals were dying and uh, nobody knew why and then it came somebody spoke with someone else and at the end uh, nobody really published that but it's on reviews no, no, so. now, now they did publish it actually, okay because i think lourdes uh, who is also a member of our of our action uh, this is one of the benefits of networking they were testing uh, vivo morpholinos on mice and they were following the manufacturer's instructions uh, in which they use an endoporter to make it, uh, you know, to, to use them with a, with a, with the mice. And, and they noticed that many of them were dying and they were calling the company and saying, actually my mice died. And they said, oh, shouldn't happen. No, our, our thing is perfect. And actually, after a bit of networking and then, you know, a coffee break kind of chat, oh, my mouse, my mouse died and I also did mine. Then they started digging and they realized that there was something going on. And they did, they did actually publish something on that. So I think it's one of those things that probably wouldn't have gone any further if they hadn't spoken about it. In this case, it was during coffee breaks at some of our meetings, but now we have the tools and I think it will be probably possible to be able to do something like that. As usual, probably one of our main problems is the value that we get out of it, considering how busy we all are and how because there's time that we could be investing into something else. But I think we probably need to push for those things to be valued further than just this room. I think if those preprints were also included in some evaluations and if they were considered, obviously then you can be, you have to be careful and it has to be a balance because then you can, anyone could publish pretty much anything and we've probably seen some of that during, the, during the, this pandemic, that there had been so many preprints on COVID that it was swamped by it. But I think there should be a balance on that. Um, the, the, the strength of this bioarchive somehow should rely on peer reviewing, so uh, public peer reviewing, so people yeah. being able to comment and say this is crap, uh, you know. Yes, and actually so it, it is open for comments. We, we had an experience, maybe Patricia can tell you about that, because we have a paper who's been in, in bioarchive since last, Febru last February 2020, just before the pandemic. and we send it to a journal 
I actually ended up there because the journal made it very easy to publish, put it in there while it was being assessed. And it was there. And then that journal didn't like it. So because they thought it was not interesting enough, which is a concept that we also think, I also think it needs to get out of our assessment. Uh, and then we send it elsewhere. And they, they in that elsewhere was eLife. And eLife had a, 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 a pre-print pre review option, which meant that the reviewers, they will publish the reviews with your preprint, and then you can answer to it in the bioarchive page. So right now our paper is there, the preprint, the comments, and our response to the comments, and the new version of it. Um, but they didn't want to publish it, so then we send it elsewhere. And it's been there since Jan December, that elsewhere. Yeah, I think it was December, wasn't it, Patricia? And actually the answer to the, their reviewers has been there since, I don't know, two months ago. So we are kind of sick of that paper. And in the meantime, the funny thing is that first time we send it somewhere, they said, oh, this is not that interesting. And in the meantime, there's been another paper that is pretty much a spitting image of what we published, that is published. And it was submitted after our preprint was put up, but still they're asking us to cite them when our preprint was out earlier. <laughs> so I, I think I would have liked it better if, if we had been able to be cited by them, but so, so do you do you think that's a, that's a lesson to learn? It's kind of a, I mean I'm by archive is around I think uh, two since two years I would say or maybe a little no, bit longer. That, but but uh, people are for, starting using yeah. it and, and there are two fears I think one is to be scooped yeah. and the other one is uh, that uh, the journal where you want to publish does not accept that this is not original work because it has already been put somewhere. There are journals in the medical field, especially, which do not like you to have deposited in, in bioarchive. I so think it's changing. What, I yeah. think it's something that is changing. Actually, when the last journal where we are trying to publish it, uh, you know, I got an email saying, we have a special issue for this and that. And I was like, oh, fantastic. And I sent them the link to the bioarchive and said, this is here. It's actually already been reviewed. Uh, and do you like it? And they said, yes, 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 send it to me. But I think, you know, I think editor says, yes, 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 send it to me pretty much all the time. Because I don't understand then that it's been there for five months. Uh, but they, they said, yes, we are happy. It goes within our, you know, rules to accept things that had been into preprints and and it's not a problem at all. And actually for us, it was just, you know, we could send them the link and said, hey, this is our paper. What do you think of that? So I think that's a plus. For us also, in that particular paper, we have pretty much every single master student that's been in the lab for the last four years. And I think for them it's good because they can put it in their CVs and apply for things and so on. And considering it's already been a year and a bit since it was submitted first time round, I think it's good that it was there because at least it was there to show. But it's also, I mean, I don't think we were scooped. They submitted theirs a month after we did and they wouldn't have had the time to, to repeat all the experiments. They were probably were working on something very similar around the same time and it was unlucky, but they could have cited us because we were there first. Uh, Actually, ours was in, 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 in February online and theirs was submitted in March and, and it was uh, published in September, August, September. So they have plenty of time to, to have checked. But anyway, that's how that goes. I'm, I'm looking at Puri because uh, I was wondering since you were sharing with us uh, your experience in uh, uh, evaluating uh, people in, uh, you know, about their publications and things. Um, uh, how is the publication by archive uh, being seen at the moment uh, when, when, you know, in careers, in, uh, in CVs? 
I mean, so normally when, when you evaluate, and I think all of us that had the same experience, you get like a set of rules of how you have to evaluate and what do you need to count and what doesn't count. And, and submitted papers, they don't count, but you have to check in PubMed whether they have been accepted or not. And the bioarchives papers, according to, to what the things that I have received as, as guys, they don't count unless they have been you know, reviewed and accepted. This may change in the future. I mean, as Virginia was saying, we are, you know, we are the scientists and the only ones that need to push for for the things to change. You no, know? and you know, and and I think that we are honestly being receiving pressure for too many places. You no, know? not only the impact factor, but also we are slaves from these journals. Sorry, I mean, you every yeah. time you send the journal, you have to change the letter and the images and the and and it's a pain. And on top of that, you pay them. So I mean. We are the clever guys from the class, right? <laughs> it, it really doesn't look like. Yeah, I, I understand. Yes, I think uh, it's uh, we really need to to like make it clear what is your opinion, well, our opinion in this uh, whole story. And there is another issue, which is that uh, journals wouldn't be able to make uh, what they do if. For if not for the people who ref reviews and you know the referees yeah. who do that for free, yeah. so we have but, to pay. Yeah. But then we review for but, free. Yeah, but Michela, you can say sorry, I don't review. No, there is a limit in which you say. I mean, yeah. I I don't review. I I do you know, twice a month. No, and or yeah. something like that. Yeah. But but the other part you have to submit papers and so where, where do you complain about all the bureaucracy that is around us and that makes it impossible or almost very difficult for us to work in what we really need to do which is science no? where do you complain about that I mean yeah it's becoming more and more um, actually we had a, accepted a paper only a, a couple of weeks ago and in the meantime they changed the whole system so we had to even though it had been accepted we had to resubmit everything and it was a huge pain but actually i i was i i had a bit of hope because actually this new system from wiley it was uh, the the second the the, the second you uploaded the Word document, it picked up all the information from it. And it tells you, are those your, your authors? And I was like, oh, it got the right spelling for all my co-authors. And are those the institutions? Oh, yes. So maybe maybe it's getting better. Because I, you know, I have a tendency to collaborate with people with difficult surnames, evil people, my collaborators. And uh, yours is easy, Michaela. <laughs> but, but you know, having to type in 21 co-authors into and their affiliations and their funding and their, yeah, that takes a lifetime. Yeah. So I think it's getting better, but probably because they have our money and they can do things with it. <laughs> but we'll see. So why are you sharing, Ainara? Free new so, Yeah. So this is a new journal, mm -hmm. freeneuropathology.org, and it's free for authors, free for readers, free from publisher, free <gasps> formatting, free option. And it looks very interesting, but it doesn't still have an impact factor. Yeah, <laughs> I am really concerned. Problem. Yeah. It's and like I, I look forward to, yeah. to submit to this kind of papers. That's, yeah. that's my... I, 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 so do I, actually. And they are. I think we can collaborate by being reviewers and this kind of things yeah. and, and getting involved in, in this. This was uh, the editor was uh, was is a good one. Mm -hmm. So it was a, I think it was in a in a big uh, journal before. Okay. I don't okay. get now. Make a note. Yeah, okay. But that's always the problem, isn't it? That we wish we could publish just anywhere, but then we need. Or yes, or or free dogs to get grants, and we need to get our own grants, and we need impact factors, and we. So I think it's probably the fact that we we need to get the balance of what we send where. 
But if we were all in Nobel Prizes yeah. already, we probably could afford to send them somewhere with no impact factors. I mean, when I saw the Dora uh, declaration, I thought, you know, well, that's, that makes lots of sense. Impact factor is not the right uh, metrics. And, 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 and there is this H index, which is not so excellent, but still it's a bit better because it's evaluating the person, the production of the person, let's say, over time and has some kind of uh, realignment uh, if you are in the field since uh, ever or, or you're just uh, younger and so on. And then, uh, you know, at least in Italy, there are the, the top uh, funders um, evaluate your cumulative impact factor, which is bullshit, may I say that word? Yes. And, uh, um, and so, for example, IRC, this is the cancer research, uh, mm -hmm. Italian Association for Cancer Research. If you have less than 30 uh, cumulative impact factor or whatever, you cannot even apply to grants. So it's not that they evaluate, it's just, you know, there is a, a, a very, terrible because... Uh, it's stupid. Because yeah. uh, sometimes it's, it, it may be just a matter of luck in not on the, the amount of work you put onto something on, on, the, on the capacity that you have to do something. I, I, I have two papers that because they were clinical trials, they're extremely well cited. And that's why I had tons and tons and tons of citations. But it makes no sense. There are people that were working with me that were probably working as hard as they were brighter and they were and they, they didn't publish clinical trials. And maybe instead of having something that has been cited a thousand times, they have something that has been cited 20 times. And come on, there is I mean maybe not between a thousand and twenty, maybe it's maybe a hundred times. Uh, but it's, it, it doesn't reflect the quality of the work. It only reflects on this metrics that we have for, for Plus, I don't know how it's the situation in, in the rest of the world, but in Italy, um, to get your habilitation, like to become professor, uh, you what counts is not the impact of your paper, it's the number of your papers. Yeah. So the, the push is to publish as much as you can in uh, low quality journals. Yeah, by weight. Basically. Yeah. So basically, you are, you know, evaluated in two different ways, one for funding and one for uh, career, and uh, and uh, you don't know exactly what, what you should do at the end, because, you know. Yeah, anyway, so this is, uh, make, I think it's making things a kind of uh, not really, how can I say, appealing <laughs> for the I young think, people. I think that is a drive to change it. And we need to pursue it. And I think we need to fight for it. But we need to be first aware of it. And sometimes you're not until you're a bit into it. So you need to know the rules to break them. And we can uh, ask uh, our cost uh, action to, to, to come forward with some ways of at least, you know, to, to say, look, we are a group of scientists and we think that this uh, is wrong we should do something else. Mm -hmm. Ainara, you wanted to say something, I think. Yes, I wanted to comment on your question regarding the lowering standards for negative results, and I don't really agree with that. I think the standards should be the same. It's, it's as bad to have a, uh, to focus on a bad uh, positive results paper and try to replicate it and lose time, you know? Uh, trying to replicate a, a positive results paper as, as, as a bad, uh, as a negative result paper. So, so, so I think the standards should be the same. It, it, you need to have a statistically significant, uh, good design in the, in the experiment. Um, yes, I think we shouldn't lower the standards, no, not lower. even though it's more difficult. But sometimes you, you're not expected to run all your animals again for something that first time killed everything because that would be unethical as well. But perhaps you can publish it even if it's not statistically significant and give someone the hints to see, well, you know, maybe they did this wrong because they didn't wait long enough for this and that, for example. I don't know. 
I'm just well, well maybe, maybe you need to really analyze if there is something toxic in your solution or something like that. Yes, I mean, but I may maybe not, you don't need to kill again. But the... Maybe you don't have all the data. Maybe you need someone else to look at it. And I think sometimes it's good to publish things even if they're not complete. As long as you tell exactly what you did and how you did it, and that you are able to tell this is what I did, because you know, if what you if you took proper account of what you did and how it was done, it may be enough for someone else to take some conclusions out of it. I'm putting quite high hopes, and now maybe I'm just jumping ahead a bit in artificial intelligence. I think at one point it may be possible that all that data that we have placed somewhere could be the basis for some something to just just get the information out of it is there so i think artificial intelligence is advancing quite a lot so perhaps we can contribute to that common knowledge with just bits we don't need to make the whole picture we can just contribute i don't know i'm just hoping that one day we'll be able to do it better so uh, Virginia and, and Miquela, how difficult was it to convince the journal that it was worth to make a special issue about negative results? Did you test several journals or this was No, just it wasn't difficult at all, actually. No. But I think because we, we the trick was to have already the the editor in our in our cost action. <laughs> So basically, yeah. with NIT, the idea was uh, that well, it was uh, Anemike who who said, "You look, I am." I think she was already president of the OTS Society, yeah, she and was she was an editor, editor there, so of the NAF. And so she said, she in fact said, uh, "We should do that." And, and uh, she's we also an editor in the Journal of Neuromuscular Disorders. So uh, that was easy. That we we just had our insider in in there, so we didn't have a problem. But actually, uh, since then, quite a lot of large journals have pushed for it. And actually, Nature had had a couple of editorials on that. Uh, it's one of those things is do as I say, no as I do. Uh, yeah. Because then they're the first ones to go for big impact and this and that. But actually, uh, I think they are trying to promote it. And I think we're probably going to see more of that in the next few years. Because also it's in fashion. And I think sometimes you need to ride those waves and, and try to take advantage of them. So we'll see. I think. I think there are there are some good things starting to happen. Actually, I, I forgot to include this this um, example, but for example, there is a there is an institute I think it's in Germany who is given money actually for people to replicate data. So it gives a prize. I think it's like two thousand euros for the best paper replicating data. Uh, and I think it's a very good thing because sometimes, you know, if something, you don't do something because someone has done it before, but someone needs to do it again to prove that this can be done. And people don't do it because it doesn't get published, it's not that interesting, but actually it's also something very relevant. And I think that's something that we sometimes may need to change or the way we think about this and the way we think about science in general. I agree, and uh, I think I find it very annoying that the top journals uh, are also those that, whose uh, material and methods se section is uh, completely useless. So yes. if you want to replicate a nature paper, you will never be able to because there are not enough uh, details. No, uh, or they're in supplementary somewhere hidden and you need to search for it. Yeah. So I think that uh, it's all getting uh, to image, uh, like imaging, you know, or imagining what you actually have uh, produced and not really uh, showing data. So We're going to start a revolution. <laughs> What's this space? It's like they, they are two, two types of negative results, no? The ones you get in your lab and, and you then throw away or the ones you get trying to replicate many papers and you don't get yes. the same answer and and this you know and you you don't you never publish neither no you're like i i tried and didn't work and it didn't work I, it didn't work okay it didn't work yeah but that you put that in the drawer yeah mm -hmm. yeah so you think that that these journals because in any case in the in the editorial are now more open to accept negative yes. results, even if they are not in but the... But I think, 
uh, many journals are, even if we don't, we don't think so. I think many journals are probably more open to publish them than that. You, you obviously need to tell them and you probably need to make it very clear from the title of your paper and from the abstract that you were not able to replicate it. And I think as long as you're completely upfront with it, it's much easier to do it. And talking without having done it. So I haven't done it. Yeah. Not that I don't have any negative results, but it's true, I haven't had the time. And it's true that I'm just, but I think that probably the trick will be that because I, when I had to review some of those, which did, that I have done, in, in many cases, my advice as a reviewer was to change the title, make sure that you say this doesn't work. Don't say evaluation of X and Y. Say X in this does not happen, for example. Because that is a better result. Sometimes we are vague when we don't like what we've seen. And I think it's probably best to just show it. Okay, so unless there is some compelling question, I think I sh we should break for uh, 40 minutes <laughs> and we should be back uh, uh, at 1.30. Is, Virginia, is that okay? That's we fine. have only 40 sure. minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm at home, so I can easily eat something. So you should ask those that are running to the to the cafeteria or something yeah. like that. So I I'm think a... some people has already gone to do what they needed to do. So mm -hmm. I think we can be back uh, half past one for the last session okay. of the school. Oh, last Thank session. Thank you. <laughs> See you in a while. See you later. Ciao.